Hi everyone, back again with another video on Kubernetes. I'm Dinod, thank you so much for tuning in. Today we are going to talk about Certified Kubernetes Application Developer Certification Domain number 4, which is on pod design. That covers replication controller, replica set, deployments, stateful sets, jobs, and cron jobs. Let's get it started. Before we go into the details on how you do replication, let's talk about why you need replication. Typically, you want to replicate your containers, that means your application, for several reasons, which includes reliability, load balancing, and scaling. By having multiple versions of your application, you prevent the problems if one or more pods get fails. This is particularly true if the system replaces any containers that fails. So load balancing, having multiple versions of the containers enables you to easily send traffic to different instances to prevent overloading a single instance or a node. This is something that Kubernetes does out of the box. A scaling benefit is when the load becomes too much for number of existing instances, Kubernetes enables you to easily scale up your application, adding additional instances as needed. Replication is appropriate for numerous use cases, which includes microservices-based applications, cloud-native applications, or else mobile backends. The replication controller is the original form of replication in Kubernetes. It is being replaced by replica sets. We'll be talking about replica sets as well during this video. But as the replication controller is widely used, it is worth understanding what is it and how it works. Replication controller is a structure that enables you to easily create multiple pods. Then make sure that number of pods always exist. If a pod crashes, replication controller replaces it with a new pod. Replication controller also provides other benefits such as ability to scale the number of pods, and to update or delete multiple ports with a single command. This is how replication controller YAML definition would look like. You can see the API version is v1 and the kind is replication controller. You will be providing the name for the replication controller and under the spec, you will be defining how many replicas you want from the given port definition under the template section. Under the template section, you will be providing the exact details that you have provided in a pod definition YAML file. That will include the metadata labels and under the spec, you can define containers, init containers, different images, ports, different config map volume mounts, different environment variables, all of that configurations related to ports, you can provide it under the template section. Replication controller can have optional selector under spec like this, where you can provide the labels used in the ports, which is used to label query over the ports that should match with the replica count. When the selector is not provided, it will assume that the provided template labels will be used as the selector. Replica sets are declared in essentially the same way as replication controllers except that they have more options for the selector. Selector is mandatory for replica sets. As match labels, you can provide the pod labels to query the pods to match with the replica count. If you see this example, you can see the API version is apps v1, the kind is replica set, and then you will be defining what is my replica set name. And under this spec section, you can define the number of replicas, under selectors, match labels, you will be defining what are my pod labels, which needs to be considered for the replica counts. Under the template section, you can provide your pod template, which includes the containers, images, and its labels. Under the selector section, not only the match labels, you can use match expressions as well to configure different conditions for the selector. In this particular example, the app label must be nginx or front end. The environment label, if it is existing, must not be production. Once you have the YAML definition, 
you can create the stateful set using kubectl create minus f and the file name and then if you want to scale the replica set you can use kubectl scale minus minus replicas then you can provide the uh, replica count replica set and the replica name if you want to get the existing replica sets you can use kubectl get replica sets instead you can use uh, kubectl get rs as well you can delete the replica sets using kubectl delete replica set command and if you want to replace an existing replica set using a yaml definition you can use replace minus f as well need to mention one more important thing when you make a change into the replication controller or the replica set port definition let's say you change the image existing ports of this replica set or the replication controller will not get updated automatically you need to delete the existing ports to apply the changes that you have made into the replication controller or the replica set if you are not yet subscribed into my channel please do hit on the subscribe button followed by the bell sign to get notified when i upload new videos now let's check the deployments deployments are intended to replace the replication controllers when comparing a deployment versus replica set a former provides the same replication functions through replica sets and also the ability to roll out the changes or else roll back if necessary you can create a deployment using kubectl create deployment and the deployment name minus minus image you can provide the image name you can set the replica count using minus minus replicas flag you can provide the port using minus minus port and then if you want to save it into a yaml definition you can run it in dry run and then output as yaml definition like you see in the screen right now if you look at this yaml definition you can see the api version is apps v1 the kind is deployment and under the metadata you will be providing the deployment name under the spec section same like the other definitions you have the number of replicas you can provide the selectors with match labels or match expressions and under the template you will be providing your port template you can create the deployment using this yaml definition using kubectl create minus f and the file name and then once the deployment is created it triggers a rollout new rollout creates a new deployment revision as a replica set this helps us to keep track of the changes made through our deployments and enable us to roll back to the previous versions of the deployment if necessary you can get the created deployments list using kubectl get deployments or kubectl get deploy command you can check the ports it got created using kubectl get ports as the deployment creates a replica set you can get the replica sets using kubectl get rs or kubectl get replica sets command and then you can see with the deployment name it has a replica set created and then the pod names are kind of matching into the replica set name which is randomly generated rollout status of the deployment can be viewed with kubectl rollout status command kubectl rollout status deployment slash and the deployment name that will show whether this deployment is completely rolled out or not and also if you make a change to this existing deployment let's say you change the image of this deployment using kubectl set image deployment and your deployment name and then you set the image uh, what is my container name uh, the image name and then you want to record this change with minus minus record or else rather than executing this command you can edit the deployment as well kubectl edit deployment command or else you can change the yaml definition and then apply the change so any of the ways if you make a change into the deployment it will initiate another rollout and then you can check the rollout history using kubectl rollout history deploy and the deployment name if you want to check the rollout history for an specific revision a kubectl rollout history and the deployment deployment name and you can provide the revision using minus minus revision flag to undo the deployment that means if you want to roll back uh, your deployment into the previous version you can use kubectl rollout undo command and then if you want to uh, undo it into a specific revision you can use minus minus 2 revision and you can provide the revision name into the same command while the pods are rolling out if you want to pause the rollout you can use rollout pause command and then to resume the uh, deployment you can use 
uh, kubectl rollout resume command in addition to these commands you need to know about what are the deployment strategies supported by this deployment definition there are two main uh, deployment strategies supported number one is recreate this will bring down all of your running pods of the older version of the application and then deploy the new version there will be an application downtime if the deployment strategy is on recreate you will be setting up the deployment strategy under the pods spec strategy and then under the type you can define a recreate to set the deployment strategy to recreate the next deployment strategy is rolling updates it will deploy the updates into the pods using the rolling update fashion that means it will bring the new version of the pods one by one before terminating the existing older version of the pods you will be defining the rolling update strategy using the pods spec strategy type and then you will be setting the value as rolling update rolling update has additional configurations such as max unavailable and max search to control the rolling update process under the rolling update section you can define max unavailable this is an optional field and that specifies number of pods that can unavailable during the update process in the same way you can define max search which specifies the maximum number of pods that can be created over the desired number of pods the values that you will be assigning into a max unavailable and max search can be an absolute number or a percentage of desired pod for an example 10% deployments are mainly used for stateless applications when you want to deploy stateful applications you need to use stateful sets instead of deployments let's take an example when you want to deploy a mysql cluster in kubernetes mysql cluster master pod needs to spin up first and then the first slave pod needs to come up and replicate the data from the master to slave 1 and slave 2 pod needs to wait until the slave 1 pod is ready then the slave 2 pod will come up and the data will be replicated and continues and for slaves to be able to connect to the master consistently it needs to have a consistent host name or an address cannot rely on ip addresses as it is dynamically assigned and the ip changes when the pod crashes stateful set assign a unique ordinal index to each pod starting from 0 1 2 3 likewise no more random names uh, like you are having it in the deployments so the benefits of the stateful sets are you will have a stable unique networking identifiers stable persistent storage ordered graceful deployment and scaling ordered automated rolling updates yaml definition is mostly similar to the deployment and then you can find out the example yaml file in the stateful sets documentation at the time of defining the stateful set you need to provide the name of a headless service uh, with a service name attribute this will be helpful to define a stable unique network id this headless service will be created as a cluster ip none service from the headless service name it will create additional dns entries for all the ports and the dns entry would look like this it will have the pod name hyphen and the number 0, 1, 2, 3, likewise and dot the headless service name dot namespace name dot svc dot cluster dot local additionally volume claim templates will be provided to stable storage using persistent volumes provisioned by persistent volume provisioners there are different types of workloads that a container or a pod can serve web applications database which means to run for a long period of time until manually taken down additionally batch processing analytics reporting are meant to carry out a specific task and then finish it examples are performing a computation image processing analytics on a large data set generating a report and sending some emails kubernetes job will perform a task and exit and restart continuously to perform the task again and again 
You can create a job using kubectl create job command and then you can provide the job name and then afterwards in the same way like you create an a pod you can pass the images additional commands and etc the yaml definition of a pod would look like this and then the api version is batch v1 the kind is job and then you will have the job name and under the spec section right you will have the template and under the template you will be providing your same like the pod template under the pod yaml definition under spec when you provide the completions as three three pods will be created sequentially. If the job randomly fails in between, it will try to achieve three successful completions. Without waiting for three pods to get completed one after another, number of pods which can run parallel can also be defined under specs parallelism by defining how many pods that you can run in parallel. Back off limit can also be defined which specify number of retries before considering a job as failed. Default back off limit is six, and then you can change that back off limit by setting up this value. Active deadline seconds can also be set, uh, which ensures that the job will be automatically terminated by Kubernetes if it takes more than uh, 30 seconds in this example to execute no matter how many ports are created. You can create the job using the uh, YAML definition using kubectl create minus f. You can get the jobs using kubectl get jobs. You can check the pods using get pods. You can directly check the logs of the pod or else you can use logs uh, job slash and the job name uh, to check the logs uh, which is created by the pods. And then you can delete the job by using the kubectl delete job command as well. Cron jobs are useful when creating periodic and recurring tasks like running backups or sending emails. Cron jobs can also schedule individual tasks for a specific time, such as scheduling a job uh, when your cluster is likely to be idle. You can create a cron job using kubectl create cron job command and then you can provide the cron job name, uh, what is the image that you want to use and also you can provide a cron expression using minus minus schedule uh, parameter and then afterwards you can provide any additional commands that you want to pass into this container. This is how the cron job YAML definition would look like. You have the API version batch v1 beta 1, you have the kind cron job and then you have the cron job name, you have the schedule with the cron expression and cron job is uh, created on top of a job definition. That job definition will be provided under the job template. If the cron job should be terminated, if it takes more than a specified number of seconds uh, to start execution after it is scheduled, you can use starting deadline seconds under the cron jobs spec section. During this video, we have discussed replication controllers, replica sets, deployments, stateful sets, jobs, cron jobs that you need to know under this pod design domain. That will give you around 20% marks during this exam. In addition to this, you need to understand how to use labels, selectors, and annotations as well for this particular domain. We have discussed that in detail during our core concepts video. If you haven't watched that video, please go and watch that video as well. Thank you so much for coming this far. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, followed by the bell sign to get notified when I upload another video on Kubernetes and any other tech and trips on cloud services like AWS, Azure, and GCP. Thank you so much. Until the next video, bye-bye.